Hello everybody, so today I want to talk about two different types of resizing dies that you might come in contact with. So now these are both full length sizing dies. Um, there is also neck sizing that we will talk about in a different video, but today I'm going to focus on full length sizing, which means when the case is fired, the die is going to come over the case and resize the entire body, neck, and shoulder to make sure that everything conforms back to your specifications. So now over here on this side, I just have a standard full length sizing die, the one you're probably most used to seeing. So we will take an in-depth look at this, but on the other side of what I have over here, these are your bushing dies. So now these do have interchangeable neck bushings, but they are still full length sizing dies. So now to get a good understanding between the two, um, let's look at them each individually first, and then we will kind of compare and contrast the benefits of each one. All right, so first let's take a look at what is gonna be by far the most common, and that is just your standard full length sizing die. So now if there is a reloading die box and it does not specify bushing or neck sizing, this is gonna be kind of the default standard that you will run into. So now as a resizing die, it does compress the case down below the chamber specs, down back to the cartridge specs so that it can feed consistently and fit in the chamber every time. But now what the way these work is when the cartridge is pushed up into the die, the case neck is actually gonna be compressed, undersized, so that it's actually gonna to be too tight for the bullet to fit into. So what goes down in the bottom of these is gonna be your expander ball on this stem. So now this does have a decapping pin through it to push the primers out when you push the cartridge up. But what happens is that case is gonna come up, it's gonna compress around the stem once it gets up into the top of the die, and then on the way out, this ball is flared to the final diameter for the case mouth. So the case is gonna come back down the stem, it is going to hit this expander ball and it is going to expand the case to the final diameter. So now, these are very basic, very simple, as you can see, not very many parts to these. To install them, they do go basically just through the die body. You do have kind of a retaining cap that will thread into the die body to hold everything into place. You get these set in and then what you come and do is you just thread this all the way up and then you leave your decapping stem sticking out roughly about an eighth of an inch or so so that when the cartridge is fully compressed in it, it can push out the spent primer. Then you just have a lock nut. that you will come down, tighten in place, and now the die is set. So it does have the expander ball, it has the control geometry in the die. So this is a very basic, very simple unit. All right, now let's come and take a look at the bushing dies. Now, as I mentioned, this is still a full length sizing die. The die body does still compress and reform the entire case body. The main difference is, is that where the standard die has the reamer that cuts the neck geometry that comes in and undersizes it so they can be flared out by the expander, the die body in these does not have that feature into it. Instead, what you end up with is removable neck bushings that you can get in various sizes to actually control how much that neck is going to be compressed. Now with this, these dies can operate in um, two different ways. So one is you can have your standard expander ball like you do on your other dies, but you can still control how much that case neck is gonna be compressed by the bushings and then you can re-expand it with the expander ball. So now that's kind of your basic option. That doesn't give you much benefit over your standard dies. So now where these are really used when you start getting into precision shooting and precision loading is you go with a non-expander ball on the end. So now this means that all of the case sizing is gonna be controlled by the neck bushing. So that neck is gonna come up, it's gonna be compressed by the bushing, it will come down, it will not be re-expanded by the stem. As you can see on this one, it does not have the, explare, uh, the flared expander portion that the other expander ball does. It is just a straight cylindrical that is under the diameter of the case mouth. So now where the expander balls are gonna be at a fixed geometry, now we can actually do a selection of different size bushings to control how much we want to shrink the case neck. So now it's good to get a variation. What we're gonna look at now though is how to actually go through and measure what we are looking for and that is gonna be neck tension. So now neck tension is gonna be how much force or compression that case neck is gonna be putting on the bullet so that it keeps it seated in place without that bullet sliding out. So now you don't want too much because it can cause hard seating and then it can kind of deform the bullet when you're trying to seat it into the case. Too little obviously is gonna to lead to a loose bullet that's not gonna retain its seating position is gonna kind of slide in and out of the case. So we do kind of want a happy medium. There are some kind of general rules to shoot for, but now let's look at how to actually go through and figure out what our needed neck tension is gonna be. All right, so what we're gonna start with is going to be the loaded 
cartridge. So now you are going to want a set of micrometers with this. Calipers just really do not have the resolution when you're getting into thousands of an inch that you do need at this point. So this was a very cheap set I got off Amazon of just a vernier micrometer. Um, I do highly recommend getting one of these. You will actually need two different types of this to do um, both of these different methods. So this one is just flat anvils and we're going to measure the outside diameter of the case neck. So with the bullet seated in it, what I get is 0.2716. So that is the final loaded diameter of the case neck, 0.2716. So now because of that, <clears throat> what I'm looking for is between one to three thousandths of an inch of neck tension. So what that just means is the diameters of the bushings are called out on the sizes of them. You can get them in one thousandths of an inch increments. So if I'm going for about one thou of uh, case neck tension on these, knowing that the diameter is 2.716, I want to be about 0 0.2706. Um, but they usually don't make half thou increments, so I could even go down just a little bit and start going with a 0 0.270 neck bushing. That'd give me about one and a half thou of neck tension. Now one to three thou is kind of the standard neck tension, but it is something you can play with a little bit um, just to dial in for the utmost precision if you are to this level. All right, now the next method we're gonna look at is actually measuring the case neck thickness and using that to determine what our neck tension is gonna be set at. So we're gonna come in and use a set of micrometers that has a ball on the inside and a flat angle on the outside, so we're gonna be able to measure the thickness of the round surface. We will come in on the inside, try to measure about halfway down the case neck, and right there I am getting a case thickness of 0 0.0135. All right, so now 0 0.0135 is our neck thickness, so now we're gonna double that so we get the thickness on both sides. So what that's gonna get us is gonna be 0 0.027. So now what we're going to do is knowing that the bullet is going to be 0.243 diameter in my 6GT, we will take the 0 0.027 thickness build up in each side and add it to the diameter of the bullet. So we will add 0.243. So now wire that up, we get zero, carry the one, seven, point two, seven, zero, is about what my nominal should be. So now with that, going with a one thou neck tension, we should go with a point two, six, nine diameter. So now, as you can see, there is a little bit of discrepancy between the two of them. So the one I always use is the case neck thickness method, usually just because I buy the brass, um, unsized, unprimed, um, unloaded, so I do usually go with the neck thickness to pick my bushing size, but there is slight variations because when you're dealing with thousandths of an inch, you can see we're about a thou off in our thickness measurements for our neck tension between the two measurement methods. So really, whichever method you pick, um, any of them are gonna be good to get you close within that range. Like I said, we were about a thou off, but as long as you kind of pick a method and measure with it consistently throughout the batch, um, your measurements will be consistent through that batch. So. The one thing with your case neck thickness measurements is you need precision brass or else that case neck thickness can vary slightly. And where the bushings do control the outside diameter of the case neck, sometimes doing that with a loaded cartridge is probably gonna be a better option. All right, so now that we've looked at the two of them, let's kind of see the pros and the cons of each style. So now starting with just your standard, um, your pros are definitely gonna be, these are much easier to manufacture, there's less components, these are gonna be far cheaper, and when you're not really trying to dial in every ounce of precision for just your standard general use, these are gonna be the way to go. Now, let's look at neck bushings and the benefits that those do have over your standard. So now, the one that I mentioned is gonna be that you can have control over your neck tension, so you can adjust that a little bit up or down, depending on what you feel, um, that combination likes in your rifle. So now one of the other benefits is gonna be you can improve your case life using neck bushings. So when your standard dies where they do over compress the neck just to re-expand it over the mandrel, what you can do with the bushing dies is you can set that so you're not compressing it as tight and you're compressing it to the final diameter. So you're not over compressing it and expanding it, you're only doing a single compression. So now what that does is that leads to a lot less working on the brass 
leading to longer brass lives. Now, one thing I have also noticed using bushing dies is that I don't have to trim my cases near as much because when I'm using an expander ball, that is going to come in and be pulling out on the brass. So it's gonna be kind of stretching and opening the diameter of the case neck. So without using expander ball, I found that my cases don't grow near as much and I don't have to trim them hardly ever. So now with that, the downside of the bushing dies is obviously they're gonna be more expensive. You have to buy different bushings to get what you want set. And just a few more components and a few more complexities like that added to the process. So I do use these in my precision and competition rifles just for a little bit more control for brass that I'm reloading eight, nine, 10 times where I wanna put as little stress on the brass as possible. So now for all my other rifles that are just kind of general purpose um, hunting, I do just use the standard full length die because I do not need the complexity or the control that I get with the bushing dies that I do with my competition and precision rifles. All right, so those are the two basic types of rifle full length sizing dice. Now what you guys end up getting and using is gonna to be totally dependent on your situation and your needs and your application, but there's the pros and cons of both of them and also a rough guide to get started when using bushing dies and selecting the right size. So now, if you guys have any questions, go down and leave them in the comments, or if you guys use either one of these, let us know some of your experience with them, some of the pros and cons you guys have run into, and we can go over them later. But I appreciate you guys tuning in. Thanks, everybody, and we'll see you next time.